Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Justin Rogers. First divisional game on tap Sunday against the Packers. Justin, um, and we've talked throughout the week about the <clears throat> the injuries to the secondary for the Lions and just all the problems that Aaron Rodgers can compose. So uh, aside from that, what do you think is the biggest key to victory for the Lions in this game, aside from the secondary versus Rodgers? Well, well, I'm going to stick, I guess, a little bit to that, that vein. Um, <laughs> you know, t- turnovers obviously is a big one, but turnovers are big every week. I'm not going to, you know, harp on that. Yeah. But, you know, more than the secondary, Aaron Rodgers, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, they're going to get theirs. That, that's just how it works in the NFL. Good players make plays. Uh, I think the key for the Lions is going to be preventing big plays in the passing game. If you look what they've done so far, uh, the biggest passing play the Lions have given up is 24 yards this season. That's the second best behind only Seattle in the NFL. Yeah. Um, Jordy Nelson's a, a big-time deep threat, and I, th- I think he's going to be defended by Darius Slay a lot of the day. Um, Nelson can make catches in traffic deep. He's just He's got such excellent body control, such great hands. Um, you know, Cobb's dangerous after the catch. And, and the Lions can't give up big chunks of yardage. They can't afford those 30, 40, 50-yard plays because that's where they're going to beat. they got to keep the ball in front of them like they've done all season. And that's that's how the secondary has performed well this season is by eliminating those big plays, and they have to do it again yeah. on Sunday. That's precisely what Darius Slade told me when I was asking him about his, his good start to the season and what was working for him. He's like, man, I'm just focusing on, on staying with my man and not giving up the big play because I can give up some chunks here and there. We can, we're still good enough to get through, and I'm good enough to get through. Um, it's just the, the big chunk plays I'm trying to prevent, and, and so that's been a big key uh, for him in his turnaround. Uh, for me, the big matchup I'm watching this game, aside from the secondary versus Aaron Rodgers, is the Lions' running game. I mean, that, that thing has been non-existent so far. Uh, we, we talked so much in the offseason about Reggie Bush and Joyke Bell and how, how good those guys last year with the 500 yards receiving and rushing from each of them. But that, that's the first time that's ever happened in NFL history. This guy, these guys were very productive last year, and yet they've done very little through two games this year. Some of it might be with what's going on on the offensive line with injuries and so forth. But at the same time, these guys, these guys get paid to rush the ball. At some point, they have to make plays. That's particularly true with Reggie Bush. You know, he gets paid $5 million or $4 million a year to hit the home run. And at his longest run of the, of the year, I think, is about eight yards or so. And he hasn't done enough, uh, nor has Joyke Bell. And, and Bell, furthermore, has had the um, – he's had better production, but he's had more turnovers. He's had two fumbles and lost one. Um, that's the quickest way to lose a game like like Sundays. With, with It's going to be a track meet. It's going to be high scoring. Two good offenses against two mediocre to bad defenses. It's going to be a track meet. You can't, can't give up position. You can't give up a short field to the Packers and, and Aaron Rodgers and expect to win this game. Joyke Bell really has to hang on to the football. Yeah, and, and with Bush, I mean, it's it's been opportunity. He said he had six carries last week that's that's just not enough and I thought he ran the ball um, you know relatively well against the Panthers in those limited opportunities but but he needs more and I think this is a nice game for him to potentially have a breakout uh, you know the the Packers aren't that great up front they're not stout they do give up big chunks uh, up, up the gut you know and, and also Reggie Bush is, is still a very dangerous weapon in the screen game you know when they tried to run the screen game through him uh, against the Panthers or, or the short circle routes over the middle is it, it seemed like those were the plays where the Panthers really had successful pass rush. So, yeah. you know, the the short passing game to the running backs is an extension of the run. You know, it may not show up in the same stats, but, you know, they need to be effective in both areas to, to help Stafford move the chains. I see this being a high-scoring game. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is so good. You know, 9-1 against the Lions. Um, that's one of the best offenses, passing offenses in the league. Lions also are pretty good offensively. I, I think that, that to win this game, they're going to have to keep pace on the offensive side, and I just don't see that happening if Matthew Stafford's keying on Calvin Johnson as much as he did last week. He needs to develop those secondary weapons. You wrote about wrote about it this week. Our columnist, Joel LaPointe, wrote about it this week. It's it's an important thing, and, and you know that, that includes Eric Ebron and Golden Tate and all those guys, but it includes the rushing game. and To have uh, some kind of threat level or some kind of presence back there would improve and ease things so much for, for Matthew Stafford and finding his secondary targets. Yeah, it's it's a, a weird dynamic. I mean, you have Calvin Johnson, you have the best wide receiver in the game. You want to make sure you feed him the ball enough on a weekly basis and maximize his talents. And then it's everything after that, finding the right balance. And uh, there's a lot of new moving pieces right now. There's a new coordinator. I think they're still trying to find their rhythm. Uh, it, it looked good against the Giants. They got away with it against a, you know, a, a lesser team. Uh, Panthers. It didn't look terrible that the fumbles made it look a lot worse than did the missed field goals. But 
uh, you know, they still haven't found quite the, the, the rhythm of, of maximizing all the weapons they have at their disposal. I think the biggest key still comes down to the secondary and if it's able to find some answers in the nickel um, and, and stopping Aaron Rodgers. But we've just talked about it all week and it, it, we just wanted to talk about something different for once. Um, but at the end of the day, they still have to find answers in the nickel. Be, being down Bill Bentley, Nevin Lawson, uh, Cassius, Cassius Fawn and now Piers. Um, they've got three healthy cornerbacks and those guys have to step up. I, I think Rasheed Mathis might be playing um, more inside than you know they're they're letting on. Uh, Caldwell certainly said it's a possibility. Uh, he has experience there, and Randall Cobb's their second best weapon. You know you want to put your best players in the position to defend their best players, and and that where Mathis's talents best fit. Um, Slay and Mathis play right and left side normally, and 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 Slay is typically on the side where. Uh, Nelson is so it just it only makes sense to get to get Mathis over yeah. Cobb a little bit more this game Mathis uh, likes playing outside the Lions like him playing outside and he's been very good on the outside for the past 12 months that he's been there um, but uh, as he did tell me last week that he would move inside if he were asked to at some point and that point might be this week with the threats that, that uh, Green Bay has in the slot so something to watch uh, for Justin Rogers I'm Kyle Mikey we are M Life. keep it right here